Hey, this is Bruce Abbott. And my name is Ray Shillins. Welcome to Feel the Ad Love, a podcast produced by Radio Lounge, featuring the inside scoop on advertising and marketing with guest interviews with some of the brightest minds in advertising. Really interesting as uh, we uh, progress through uh, 2019, so many, so many folks are looking into doing podcasts. They are uh, discovering the value of a podcast as, a, as an alternate opportunity to market their company, their Pod. services. And we've gotten so many calls this year. Podcasting is hot right now. And you know, you're listening to this podcast. We love to do this just for the fun of it. But we do a lot of podcasts for clients and organizations. And, you know, if you're interested in doing a podcast, maybe you've got an idea or maybe you've got a company that's thinking, man, you know, that would be a great addition to our marketing mix. Visit RadioLoungeUSA.com. Give us a buzz. You know, come on. Contact us via email. We'll help you get started on that. Come over for lunch. You can see our new podcast studio. Studio B is now Studio P for podcast. And I like that. we have the ability to uh, not only bring folks into the studio to do a live podcast with folks uh, right there in the studio, but obviously through through Zencaster, we've got the ability to record a, a podcast with a guest from most anywhere in the world. And then you launch it and let the world know about your brand. So Radio Lounge USA is the uh, place to, to come visit and find out more about our capabilities there. We are uh, exploring current trends and topics, the latest news and events in our ad community with a very special guest today. We are talking with Jackie Dryden. Jackie is the chief purpose architect of Savage Brands. Uh, when you live on purpose, you become unstoppable. And uh, with a passion for helping others discover why and what for, Jackie's been doing this for many years. And she had an opportunity to, uh, to join us uh, from Nashville where she now lives, and uh, it, it's a great interview. I hope you're going to enjoy it. You know, I just love it when a, a person defines themselves with something other than president and CEO or something like that. Here at Radio Lounge, I am the, uh, uh, what am I, uh, Identity Crisis <laughs> Department. I, I forgot. No, I'm it's... the Identity Crisis Department at Radio Lounge, but yeah, there Jackie you go. Dryden is the Chief Purpose Architect at Savage Brands. And when you, you live on purpose, you become unstoppable. And with a passion for helping others discover why and what for, Jackie Dryden leads individuals and organizations to uncover and align with their purpose. But don't be fooled. Her purpose probing strategy packs quite a punch that shakes people to their foundation. And as a speaker, writer, and purpose coach, Jackie spends her days provoking others to uncover the true reason they exist beyond earning a living and loving family and loving where you live too mm -hmm. so jackie quote unquote purpose dryden her business book <laughs> get your head out of your bottom line and build your brand on purpose there's that word again guys visionary leaders to reconnect with their true strengths through the power of purpose a proud veteran of the advertising industry jackie has spent the bulk of her career at advertising agencies as a creative director and her work has been recognized with hundreds of awards for creativity and was recently inducted into the southwest american advertising federation's hall of fame i didn't know that yes well, I, I guess i should know that right jackie i think that's an important thing <laughs> to know so congratulations on that that must have been a great uh, opportunity so welcome to the podcast we finally get around to letting you say something jackie hi <laughs> oh my gosh i was just i was listening to going who is that you're talking she, about I'm she's like no going. keep it going keep it going i like this i like yeah, this well, bring it on need. i love it that you keyed in on on chief purpose architect because i made it up Yes. And I was like, well, let's see. Nobody else has this title. How do I want to talk about what I do? And putting chief in front of anything sounds important. <laughs> so rather than just being a purpose architect, I wanted to be a chief one. Okay. And nobody stopped me. So I, I have that. And I'm trying to trying to own it and trying to earn it, I guess is the best way to say that. Good news is, sweetheart, it's a higher pay grade. So there you it, go. It is. It, it comes is. with if... a, a Gulfstream G6, too. So... I would. I'm glad that you're there. It is, Man, it's, it's, I can't wait to try that out. Because I tell you what, it is what the assistant purpose architect is longing to be at some point. So you are, <laughs> you are the ambition. ultimate goal, right hey, there. Hey, assistant, give me some coffee. Will you? Yes. The seven Please. stages to brand advocacy from Savage Brands. <laughs> you know, just the name Savage Brands. It's like, yeah, we mean business. You better listen. And do what we say, right? No, you don't. You don't attack it like that. You attack it with oh, it's, purpose. It's great because well, okay. we get to say, "Come, come play with all the savages." You know, uh, we, that's we call ourselves right. savages, and we 
we get to own that moniker, which kind of uh, gives a little edge to it, right? Yeah, I like that. Well, so, with, with loincloth aside, uh, let's talk about the first <laughs> stage of brand advocacy. Well, you know, I want to set this up just a little bit because um, this is very cool because, you know, one of the things that you've mentioned before is that, yes, you know, all companies communicate, but acknowledging the stages of the communications journey and where information turns into belief and into action, you mentioned that really determines the success. Fill me in a little bit about kind of where you're going with that. Yeah, I think after years of working with companies um, to not only align their culture, but look at what they were saying outside of their organizations, we saw this large gap that that people kept saying, well, I already told everybody that. Well, we've said that. We've said that a hundred times. And we started dissecting this and looking at the great companies and how they were building this brand loyalty, you know, this tribal loyalty where people will hold on to it. Uh, like, you can't take my iPhone out of my hand. I will clutch it until the day I go. You could give me seven Androids for free, and maybe they work better, but I'm loyal to this brand. Why is that? And we we started looking at how companies put information out there, said it, boom, thank you, check it off the list, and move on. And we realized that there were other things in the background happening or not happening, which made those communications fall flat or made them work. And it wasn't just putting the message out there. And so we dissected it down into seven stages. And then as we jump into those seven stages, your first stage, awareness. What is that? Well, if you are just sitting there in the corner thinking something, it's not going to be known. So awareness is putting the message out there, actually committing to saying, this is what we want to say, this is the intention behind it, this is what we mean, and building awareness. And many brands do this well. They've got a lot of chatter going out there. So it's this first stage of going, okay, I, I, that fit into my frame of awareness. I heard some noise, I heard something going on. That's kind of step one, and most brands leave it there. You know, one of the things that I, I find with a lot of folks, when you ask them to define their business or define their place in the marketplace, they go, well, we're family owned and operated. It's like, no, no, you have a purpose in, in, in your business and in whatever you do. I always think of the mafia, family yeah. owned and operated. I don't know. That's a, <laughs> aren't they, they family are. owned and operated? Yes, uh, they maybe are. So. And we respect that much here at, uh, at the program. Uh, well, you know, that whole thing with the sequence of, of awareness you mentioned, uh, you know, beginning with sharing a message. I mean, without awareness, you are invisible. It's the most familiar step. And uh, too many companies really, I mean, they stop there, don't they? They do. They, they say, I mean, they have, don't we all have checklists of things to do? And it's like, okay, we need to communicate this. We have a new product. We have a new service. We've moved locations. Something has happened. Boom. We did it. We sent the email out. We took out a, you know, we took out an ad. We did something and we communicated. We have built awareness. And they check it off their checklist. Well, there's a lot happening to the people receiving those messages that are not included in stopping there. And just because they put that information out there, and you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that it connected with the intended audience. And I don't think folks really understand the art of uh, connection, at least in many cases. And obviously, through Savage Brands and through your seven stages, uh, you help them uh, get to that. What, so, what, what is it about connection, Jackie? Yeah, I mean, connection is this piece where you need to be sure if that message was clear. So you might have said it in a way that only 3% of your audience understood it. So how do you check for clarity? How do you actually find some way of getting some communication back or building dialogue or asking questions or engaging your audiences in a way where you can find out if they actually understood what you said? Mm -hmm. It could have been awareness, but it was just noise out there, just chitter chat that, um, yes, that that was heard, but did it? Did I actually understand it? Depending Do upon I know who you're, what they're saying. Yeah. Depending upon who you're talking to, there has to be a connectivity there, and there are many, many different languages, as you say. So it really depends on your brand, your product. Uh, how you how do you speak to those folks that you want to get the message out? Is that right? Exactly. 
Um, if we if we go back to the Apple example and you look at the way that their messages are created, so they're out there, the messages are there, but they know that there is a connection because they understand their tribe so well that if you've watched some of their commercials, they don't even say anything. A lot of them are just visuals and they are emotional connections. And what they have what they have uh, learned is that their connection point with their audience is through something a little more visceral and not just by listing, here's what we have, here's how much it costs, and here's where to get it. Mm -hmm. At this stage, they have a decision they can make. They can connect, they can or comply, or, and or just merely tune it out, right? And think of how often we do that. How yeah. many how many messages? I mean, there's some number I certainly can't uh, quote it to you about. Four bajillion every day yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> every day. And you just filter so many of them out that go, not for me, not for me, don't yeah. care, whatever, for another time. And the majority of messages are filtered out. Was it understood? And did, did I actually know what you said? I mean, if you said, um, I've got four new things, four new services coming out, and here's what they are. And I don't even know what those are. I mean, you described them to me. I have no understanding. I don't have a connection point. Then this connection actually follows right behind it where I start to say, does that mean anything to me? Do I care? Mm -hmm. do, I, do I comply with this? Do I understand it? Or do I just tune it out? So, yeah, we kind of did it, but we sort of smushed those three in there. First, I need to be aware of it. Second, did I understand? And what you said or, or what I read or what I heard or what I saw. And then there's this beginning filter that I say, do I connect with that? Does it mean anything to me? Do I care? And because of the connection standpoint, uh, you, you, if you've got a particular brand or a particular service or product, you don't have to connect with everyone. You've got to connect with the core target of your, of your brand. So that becomes a little bit simpler rather than to have uh, have an understanding of a variety of connection points here. You know where you need to go, you know how to connect, uh, and that makes a lot of sense, Jackie. What about belief? Uh, belief, I would guess that, what do you, how do you train belief? How do you send the message of belief or honesty uh, in your product or service? Yeah, belief actually comes from the person listening to it. So if I said, um you know, I've got this these uh, this brand new line of shoes, and they're all one dollar. Well, I might have the awareness. I might have heard that. I might have understood what you said. They're all a dollar. I might have connected in a way that went, "Hey, I use shoes. I want something inexpensive." But then the belief thing comes in. And I go, "Yeah, I don't know. I don't believe that. That doesn't sound right to me. That doesn't feel right to me. That is not my message because I don't think I'm going to be." wearing a $1 pair of shoes for long. So this belief thing is, do I trust what the message is? Do I actually go, yep, that could be real. That that sounds right to me. And so, so your belief becomes the foundation for what I choose to do from here forward. Is belief, something, I, you, is belief something you can uh, put a message out or do you earn belief from your product? Well, I think there's both sides to that. I do think you can put a message out that is believable in terms of the tone of what you've said, that I have some past history with the company, or that you have put it in the trappings of giving me the confidence that, yes, this, this is probably true. But there is an earned piece to that, which is where we get into the more loyal after I've actually tried something. Um, an example of this is I um, have this new Aussie Doodle puppy who's nine months old, who has all this hair and hasn't been groomed yet. So I'm in Nashville and I'm looking for mobile groomers. I want somebody to come to my house. I looked on websites and so I, I had awareness. I understood what they said they did. I had a connection to, yes, I need this. I need to know more. My belief came in when I started making this subjective decision of which one do I actually believe is gonna be right for me, not that what they've said is not true. Belief doesn't mean only um, is it real or not, but is is it for me? Well, I had a quick question: Is belief driven by all of these ratings that you find? Is that uh, is that a pathway to believing, or how do you actually discover 
uh, the deep and true meaning of belief? I do think that there is the, you know, there's the Amazon effect and there's the effect of everybody's looking to what other people are saying. And that can, I mean, if I go into something and there's uh, 17,000 people that are giving it a five-star rating, then that ups my belief level. Sure. If, I, if it has a one-star rating or if it's got a five-star rating by two people, we are starting to create different different mechanisms for belief than we had before, and you're absolutely right. That is one that is one new way for people to start to filter. Do I believe this? So now that they are investing their time, their effort, their resources into the idea, now they are engaging, and they're saying, "Okay, I'm going to give this a shot." see how it goes, try this out, the belief that uh, what was shared, and they believe it might be have benefit to them. Tell us a little bit more about the engagement component. Yeah, I mean, the, engage, the engagement is um, another place where companies get and they say, okay, now I've got you. I've made the sale, I've brought you in, I've created a client or a customer. But somebody says, wow, I, I'm... I, I want to I want to try this. Um, I want to get engaged with this product or service because what you have done at this point is you've made me believe there's a benefit to me. You may have put out there what the benefits are in general, but there's maybe one or two of them that I went. That's what I'm looking for. That's the piece that I needed to know in order to give this a try. And so the engagement piece is where the rubber meets the road. Because up until now, it's chitter-chatter, and I'm processing things, and you're putting messages out there. But now I've said, all right, let's give it a try. And you do, and hopefully it turned out good. And as we roll back to the belief and engagement of segments of your seven stages to brand advocacy, I wanted to ask you about your dog trim. Did you do yeah. it, and now do you believe? <laughs> Are you engaged? Well, here's what's so cool, is I only called them today, oh. and the guy on the phone was amazing. I mean, he was just like so personable and so great and made me feel like I had the only dog on the planet. He also did a really cute thing. He's got, oh, it's your lucky day. Our very best groomer happens to have a cancellation next week. And I was like, oh, in my brain, I'm going, I'm sure this is the standard story. Sure. But my belief level was I wanted <laughs> the best groomer and I wanted to go, yeah, I want. So I'm set up for next week. I'll give you a a rundown after I experience it, but now I'm engaged. Film at 11 and an update for next week on the dog yes. trimming story. <laughs> this yeah, could be, I loved it. This could be this guy's lucky day, okay? Yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking here. Right. So you've engaged, and I, I sure hope it turns out right because dog hair grows very slowly. Okay. Oh, okay. I know. I don't want her to be so ugly that she's embarrassed, right? <laughs> Became a Labradoodle or <laughs> one of those dogs with no hair. Loyalty. Man, oh man, oh yeah. man. I think I think there are so many businesses out there, service businesses, any kind of businesses that are out for the short term. They're going to take all the money they can from you. I've known some auto repair places that do that. They get in, they get out, and then they move to uh, Canada or Mexico. But loyalty is such <laughs> an important part. That's true. Uh, loyalty is such an important part of uh, of any business. Our business here, we've had we've had clients for like uh, twenty five uh, years or so. Just because they are loyal, because we do them feeling the, the right, love, feeling the ad love, yeah. or feeling the love. But but loyalty is important. Let's talk about loyalty for just a moment. That, by the way, for those keeping track uh, you're with your pencil, that is uh, point number six. Okay. There you go. Point number six. So a loyalty is earned. This is where you have earned it. That what you said, somebody understood. They connected with it. They believed that this might work for them. They tried it. And then they went, woohoo, this is great. This is my, this is my thing. This is, these are my people. This is my product. This is my company. You have, you have proved out all that happened in front of this. And this person becomes loyal to that brand. And you can lose loyalty. But I think what you said earlier about the people that do all the front part and then they just get your money and move on. Yeah. If cable companies and cell phone companies could figure this out, one of them could rule the world because they operate on churn, which is, let me give you the bright, shiny deal for a year, and then I'm going to stick it to you after I've got you. 
if they flipped that equation and said, I'll give you a good deal, but after you're a customer for a year, I'm going to give you a better deal. Mm. Mm. I'm going to take care of you. And if they emailed every one of their customers and said, because you've been loyal for a year, we're dropping the price $10. Now wow. you would get loyalty. If mm-hmm. any one of those companies did that, I would say, I'm yours forever. You actually saw me as something other than an entry point to get in, mm-hmm. take my money, Bait and then and drop switch. me like a hot potato and only give the deals to new customers. Yeah, not a lot of companies get that, though, do they, Jackie? It's kind of sad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And those that do dominate. I mean, if you look at, I would love to have been a fly on the wall the day that somebody said, here's the deal I've got. We're going to charge five bucks for a cup of coffee, but we're going to give you the internet and make it feel warm and fuzzy. Want to do that? Don't forget no. about the sensory stuff there, too. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. They created an environment in which people realized it wasn't about the coffee, it was about the experience. Yes, yes. And that's the loyalty piece. When you get me into the experience mode, that I have good vibes with what our connection is, then I am loyal. Mm. Very, oh, is. very good point. Now, so we're on to uh, advocacy. First. Advocacy. Now, this Number to seven. me, this is where you are. You're taking this to a whole new level at this point. Now, I mean, you are you are no longer in love, but you want to share the love. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't want to keep it to myself anymore. Because yeah, it's so good. And I will start telling your company's stories, and we do it all the time, right? You have a favorite restaurant, or you have a favorite product. And you start telling a friend, you're going, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. You have to try this. Now, that kind of endorsement beats the five stars always from mm-hmm. Sunday. Raving when fans. you start telling it to each other and you get it from a trusted source that somebody says, oh, my gosh, Ray, have you tried this? This mm-hmm. is amazing. You go, all right. Yeah. So, so this loyal, this advocacy piece that comes behind the loyalty is now I am your mouthpiece. I'm telling your stories for you, and you can't shake me because I'm I'm sticking with you. There's not a lot of companies that have all of these seven in order, uh, or have they grasped the importance of having these attributes uh, to their business? That is your job uh, with Savage Brands uh, to do that. And how do people how do people um, receive your message? Do they get it, or is this something you got to hit them over the head or train them, or what? What, Jackie? Yeah, I um, it, there's a spectrum here. Some people are ready to do this and get it, but it, there's investment here, and not I'm not talking about financial investment. There is that, but there's a there's an investment in your company. When you say I care enough to understand how I build this loyalty, and this is not only outside of my company, mm-hmm. but how do I do this with my employees? How do I share a message with them where they understand it and they connect with it? They believe in what I'm saying, that they engage with it and go, yeah, this will probably work for me. Build loyalty, and I become an advocate for my own brand. Sure. So it works on both sides. And yes, it is hard for people to get it in a checklist world of, I was told I would do this and it would work, check. There's a long-term commitment to building brand advocacy. You can't do it in, in five or ten minutes or in five or ten months. Yeah, I've got a bunch of product to move this weekend. Can you run some radio ads and some print maybe? and um, Just and, uh, trick them into getting on the lot. And we yeah, can, and we'll, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll sell those things. We'll, uh, hey, Jack, uh, Jack, I want to ask you about this, uh, this uh, statement here. There's a reason people go to work every day. It has nothing to do with money. There is a reason they've chosen the career and the industry they're in. The reason is usually a strong desire to make a difference. Did you write that? Is that yours? Yeah. What does it mean? What does it mean when you say that statement? Well, it means that what they have shown by research is that the reason that somebody stays in a job is not money. It is not for a raise or a promotion or a title. The reason that people stay in jobs is because they believe they are doing something of value with people they respect for a company they admire. When you can build a group of people, build a culture around people who care about the same thing. What is the difference you want to make in the world? What is the good you want to do? How do you want to move the needle as a group of human beings? That company becomes unstoppable because it's a group of people who are interested in being additive, not what can I take away. 
a different mindset from the way most of us have been raised. And we are out there with C-suites trying to retrain the brain every day to saying it's not about shareholder value, that happy employees make happy customers. Happy customers make happy shareholders in that order. P.S. Thank you, Herb Keller, Southwest Airlines said mm-hmm. that. That's a great statement as well. You you wrote a book. You wrote a, a book uh, uh, called Get Your Head Out of Your Bottom Line. What a great title that and is. And Build well. Your Brand on Purpose. Well, and that was uh, Bethany uh, and Al. Bethany is part of the agency, as I recall, right? She is president, and she is the daughter of Paula Savage, who, yes, there is a Savage. Paula Savage started Savage Brands 45 or 6 years ago, and now it has gone on to the second generation. Bethany Andell is her daughter, and she is president of the company. How was it like so to we, write a book? Yeah. Was it fun? Oh, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever says, we've asked that before, and not a single person I know has said that it was a fun process. Well, it's like writing a book is like giving birth. You know, you're, you're, it, it's wonderful, and you're glad when it's over, but so the whole process. Champagne along the way, and you had a good time, and, and a lot yeah. of people, a lot of people like it, too, as a matter of fact, don't they? I, I guess so. I mean, we um, we felt an obligation in writing this book that there were a lot of people about uh, eight or ten years ago when we started on this quest of purpose that were starting to talk about it, but it was more about the message only. We wanted to help companies understand how not only to uncover what that is, but how to align a culture around it and how to, to deliver their company out to the world in a way that gave them a solid foundation for creating something monumental that had sticking power, that had endurance, that was about longevity and not like you were talking about earlier, let's get this stuff sold this weekend and get it out the door. Right, right. So it's a new conversation, and anything that is new, there is resistance. We come up across it every day, but, oh, my gosh, it's so gratifying when people get it, and you see the lights come on, and you see them start to shift inside their company, which makes that messages start to shift, which changes the relationships with clients and customers. And it's, it's amazing when it happens, but it, it, is, um, it is challenging. And so the book was really our homage to saying, we have figured out a way to do this, not the way. We don't say, hey, we've got the tiger by the tail. We've figured it all out. This is the only way to do it. This is one way that we have seen it to be effective and work. Jackie, it is so so much fun to uh, to look at your agency savagebrands.com is the uh, is the website and of course you can review the uh, the seven stages uh, to brand advocacy at the website. But I got to tell you, you're having fun doing this and that's important. Your word is purpose and I think we all need purpose in life, uh, a reason to uh, to wake up in the morning to do something great, and you guys are rocking it in that regard. So congratulations on that. And, uh, Thank you. You're living in Nashville now, and I think that's really cool too, because that's one of the best uh, best cities in America too. So you've made some you've made some good choices here along the way. So it sounds like you're still having fun, and there's a lot more to do. Absolutely. I think if you're not having fun, then you shouldn't show up. You need to have your you need to have your heart and soul and both feet in it. And when you do, the people around you feel it, and it, 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 it radiates out. So thank you very much for sharing the time with me to put this message out. I hope somebody hears it and says, wow, I can, I can do this in a way that has greater impact on my employees and my customers and clients. All seven. <laughs> Jackie Dryden, Chief Purpose Architect for Savage Brands with a passion for helping others discovering the why and what for. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jackie. It was awesome. Do great things, Indeed. Jackie. Thanks. Thank you for having me. I loved it and appreciate your time. Well, it's Ray and Bruce here saying thank you for feeling the ad love. Hey, be sure to visit our website, radioloungeusa.com. Also subscribe to the podcast in iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or via RSS if you haven't already. That way you never miss a show. And while you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show and share it on social media, that would be really, really cool. Copyright 2019, Radio Lounge, all rights reserved. Join us next time for another episode of Feel the Ad Love.